Welcome traders, my name is Adam Harris. I'm a Chief Market Analyst and I am recording this on a Saturday ahead of Monday the 15th of January 2024. I want to have a look at what's coming up in the market in the coming week. I'm very optimistic about 2024 in general um, and we're going to see how the markets play out week by week. So first of all just having a look at the calendar for the coming week. Uh, really I think the part that will be of most interest, not much really happening on Monday. There's a holiday in the US which means Trading volume and activity is going to be very sleepy. Uh, not much happening on Tuesday. Uh, however, liquidity will be up. Tuesday could be an incredibly active day, actually. So don't be fooled. Don't, don't get into the habit of thinking that it's the news that drives the market. That's not the case. All right. The market has its own activities, does what it does. The news can add to that potentially, um, but doesn't always have to. It's not the main driver of the markets. Okay. So on Wednesday, I do think that the US economy is doing very well. Therefore, CPI, the focus will be on how is the UK and how is Europe handling, how are their economies doing. So I think now there's going to be, in the coming months, potentially a lot more attention paid to the UK and to the EU in terms of CPI data performance. And then on Thursday, we've got jobless claims. So one of the concerns is, and one of the things that will be, especially it being an election year, is going to be jobs numbers. Um, so yes, you know, it's it, it, in theory, um, you know, you can't sustain just, um, yeah, at some point you have to have a dip in the jobs numbers. The question really is, is it a big dip or a small dip? So if it's a few thousand, it's not a big deal, <clears throat> but it will be, uh, but that's something that's going to always be under pressure, certainly at least until, uh, until next year. And then we really have on Friday, we've got the existing home sales. So, um, the beauty of perfectly, if you have hypothetically a very healthy economy anywhere in the world, the best part about that should be that if there is a bubble in a particular area, so in other words, the danger is when there's a bubble that can impact the entire economy. But if, for example, there's just a bubble in one particular area, maybe in transport or maybe in uh, home sales or secondhand car sales, those kind of things generally should have a correction. In other words, those bubbles should burst if they have outpriced themselves, if they've basically removed themselves from the, from the value of the market then they would have a correction. And so this is why I mentioned this is that yes, there are definitely there's, if you compare now, if you're very young, potentially, if you don't recall the 2007, 2009 global financial crisis. So if you weren't at a home buying age at that time, you might not know, but house prices in general, in relation to income have changed dramatically from any other point in history, our earnings versus our ability, you know, the, the pricing of houses is much higher. So there is a bubble of sorts there. And at some point that has to actually burst um, the question. And that would be a good thing because it means that the house prices for, for the majority of people at a, at a below a certain level would become more affordable. That's really what it, what the idea is. And when bubbles burst, it's a good thing. Even if unfortunately it's annoying, if we bought at the top of the bubble, we get caught in the bubble. Obviously that's tragic. That's not a good thing, but for the majority of people, bubbles have to burst. They can't bubbles are not a good thing. So that's the only reason I mentioned that is I want to keep an eye on those existing home sales. I'm sorry. So please forgive the background. I don't have the office set up yet. This is the new house. And so I'm just using a makeshift kind of kitchen. I'm working on my Island and the office is down there and I have to get it set up and sorted. And I'm using Starlink, which is interesting. So I'm using, um, uh, Starlink here connection, which is very interesting being based in the UK. It's, I'm pretty impressed with it. So that being said, let's go across to the charts and have a look and see what is going on over there. So let's move across and do this. <clears throat> And let's start by having a look at the volatility of the VIX. So again, for the most part, don't forget the VIX is, is operating and hanging around lows, not historic lows, just near its lows. So the market is relatively happy. There's nothing really, uh, not much going on here. A little bit of bullish divergence creeping in, which means we will see it rise. But again, I've spoken about this in the past. It's not really an issue until we start to creep above 25. So we've got a long way to go uh, before we get there. Let's have a look at the US dollar index. The US dollar index is testing resistance right now. There isn't any bullish divergence yet. It's a it's it's looking as though there is going to be a bullish divergence creeping in, but it's very premature for me to say that. We're testing resistance so right now. It is a wait and see. It very much is. I have to wait for this to break out to the upside. So what I'm looking for this coming week will be either a strong bullish candle. So a very strong bullish candle that will burst to the upside. Something like that will then set the tone. Uh, alternatively, a strong bearish candle. What's important about that is it has to break and close and it really should break and close above this high or below that one. What I, what I, why do I say that? I say that because um, if it can't close beyond that level, it's likely to become a failed breakout and then just come back in very much in the way that we saw this happen. So it has to be a full bodied candle, 
that'll be a shift in momentum that will usually be a signifier that the market has made up its mind which way it's going to go. So that's what we're looking for this week. Yes, it could break to the upside. That's absolutely a possibility. We are at the bottom of the range on the monthly and therefore probabilities wise, it's a little bit more likely that it's going to break to the upside, which means that we would then see euro dollar um, most likely break to the downside here. It's batting with resistance and we can see it do that. So I'm looking again, top of the range here. I'm looking for a break to the downside. Over <coughs> overall, excuse me, we are in an uptrend here. So to me, it is possible on the weekly that we could see this continue up. So how could this play out? Well, we would see the daily break to the downside. We would see it ultimately head down towards 1.0829. Then it would potentially reject that level. And then it would close a little bit higher, signifying that it has produced a higher low, a swing low, and then it would continue up. So we're going to have to see how that plays out because the price action right now is just offering very little clear signals to what it wants. Sterling as well stuck within its range, testing the top of the range on the weekly here. It's just not really going anywhere. It's a little bit more bullish. So actually Sterling here, cable is hinting at a continuation to the upside, hinting at a potential weaker US dollar. There are going to be times when it's very clear what the markets are doing. Right now, currencies, majors are not offering a lot. And that's okay. It happens because the dollar doesn't necessarily know what it wants to do. You can see here Australian dollar also now above that 50 period moving average. It's done it in the past and then just come back below it. So that doesn't in itself isn't really a big difference. However, I would say that here you've got the 10 and 20 almost above the 50 period, which they never really did over there. So again, it's leaning that a little bit more as though we are at, in the medium term, we will see that dollar weaken. We'll see the Australian dollar strengthen but we still haven't got there yet. We haven't produced that solid swing low. And so that's what I would hope we would get this coming week. Kiwi dollar will be the same thing. Again, Kiwi dollar has got a little bit of resistance up here, but it looks more bullish than bearish, hinting again at a weaker US dollar. So it's interesting when I was looking at the dollar index to go back to that, the dollar index is looking as though it wants to strengthen, but it could ultimately weaken. So we're getting a contradiction here. The majors look just that little bit more bullish against the dollar. So the dollar is going to weaken, but the dollar itself is also looking a bit bullish. So uh, we'll get it really, it's just a wait and see, unfortunately. Dollar yen. <clears throat> so dollar yen has produced, it's broken the high this of this week, broke the high of last week. The monthly is producing so far a bit of a bullish candle in the moving averages. So in isolation, when you see this, it usually means that we're going to see it continue to the upside, which supports a stronger dollar. So we see the dollar index looking like there could be a bit of a stronger dollar and dollar yen saying there could be a little bit of a stronger dollar. And actually, the reason that's worthwhile paying attention to is that historically, when we get a really strong dollar, we also do tend to get that dollar yen rising as well. So when I say stronger, we get it. It's bullish. Dollar Swissy is also just testing this level of resistance. It's in an area, it's in a downtrend, no doubt about it. Again, so again, the daily for me, I would prefer for this to break to the upside. So the weekly here is showing me that we could comfortably have a move up towards 0 0.8670 and then resume the trend to the downside. But we're at a level now where we could continue down. There's no bullish divergence. There's no real signs of it here. This trend is still intact. So this kind of leans, uh, this one leans towards a uh, price. We could have that momentum candle. So I think this week's gonna be interesting. There's no reason why it couldn't necessarily happen this week. We're back. Everybody's back now. The market is kind of kicking off. I think it's fair to say that we should get that. We should get a move, a decision this week. Let's see how that goes. Dollar CAD pushing up a little bit higher. There's a little bit more range bound. And so again, this also shows here a break and a retest and a bullish candle here finishing on Friday. This wants to go a little bit higher. So there are signs on the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD of a stronger dollar and on dollar index. And then when you look at Euro dollar cable, Aussie and Kiwi, it's potentially a weaker dollar. I think we should lean towards a slightly stronger dollar as an expectation this week. I think that would be plan A. Uh, let's move on to metals, have a look at gold. So gold generally principally looking nice and strong. Remember that gold is not a hedge against inflation. That is an urban myth. I want to kind of state that now it's not. Gold is used in technology and everything we have. It's used in jewelry. It's still used in banks, obviously, in terms of, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of backing, potentially backing for financial instruments. Um, those are its primary uses. Um, the hedge against inflation thing is somewhere along the line that was, that was introduced as an idea and it's stuck and people think that that is the only reason that gold ever moves. And that is for want of a better expression, complete bollocks. Okay. So it isn't the case. Um, there is no evidence to support that in our, in at least certainly not in modern times. So we need to just eject or just get rid of that idea. Um, right now we have, uh, 
strong gold. It's been historically kind of, it's, it's been looking to build to the upside. It's battling in this area. It hasn't broken through this area, but I'm still bullish on this in principle. We've got a nice little swing low here, that weekly candle, a little bit bullish indecision. I think I'd like to see this week again, see a move to the upside. But again, if we get that stronger dollar, we're going to see it take pressure. It's going to get pushed back a little bit. So it really does come back down to, you know, the dollar doesn't have to do anything. If the dollar for the next six months just decides to kind of tread water, then we'll see everything else will either not trend or it will do its own trends. In other words, the thing that drives the other instruments will be the other components in that instrument. So that means that if the dollar doesn't do much for the next six months, but gold is going up, then that's gold pushing up to the upside, not the dollar um, weakening. Okay, because there's always those two components in when we look at a few of these things here. So gold generally to me is still looking bullish. You can get gold being bullish and a strong dollar. You can get those. You can get a strong euro and a strong pound and a strong dollar. You can get various things that can happen at the same time. It's really about the degree of the difference between the strength or the weakness of them. Here, for example, you can see silver is ping-ponging between these levels. It does want to break to the upside. Um, I would just be cautious with that. It's very messy and very range bound. So I'd stay away from silver completely. Uh, let's have a look at, let's go into uh, energy. So let's have a look at natural gas. Natural gas, there we go. Starting to look more and more bullish here. Starting to break to the upside. This is a whole range and this is a whole story. I don't want to bore you with it if you're new to this, but I've been talking about natural gas doing a bit of a reversal for so long that eventually it just wasn't even a thing anymore. This was the range and eventually we've broken out of it. We've come back into it. Whatever I've said in the past has ultimately never come to be. What I mean by that is that analysis, the, the, the divergence and all the different things that just never really came to be. So it's scrapped. Really looking at this from a fresh perspective now, we've got a very strong bullish look. This behavior here is very similar to when you look at some of the equities, when you look at something like PayPal, you look at Kathy Wood's arc, you're going to see very similar behavior there. Just interesting, just an observation. All right, like crude oil, Consolidating the weekly is really the biggest clue here. It's stuck underneath the moving averages. It's battling with them as resistance. It's not really offering a lot here and it's basically range bound. So for me as a, as a trader, although I am looking and expecting it to be that little bit more bullish, when I look at it from a weekly perspective, it is clearly just ping ponging. You've just got a series of like indecision candles there, um, wicks above and below. So, uh, and it's under pressure from the moving averages. So it's got a lot of pressure that it has to break through to the upside. So not a lot really happening there. Then have a look at uh, crude oil. There go the dogs. Okay, so again, they're under pressure. You could, excuse me, excuse me. Okay, there we go. We had a delivery, excuse me. Okay, so have a look at this as well. So you can see here, definitely battling with that resistance level. And it's when you get situations like this, it is always decided by a momentum candle, which breaks up to the upside, breaks through there, closes that side or breaks down. Again, I think, you know, the difference here is I think sort of crude oil and oil in general is doing its own thing anyway, not so much uh, everything else, but the markets are a little bit in a coma. Main reason for that is coming back from the holidays. That's usually the main reason, but the next week I think is interesting. I think that's going to be telling. I want to see what happens there. So not expecting much. This is definitely those situations where you sit back and wait, wait for the market to do its thing first, because it, if you get in, especially in, especially if you have, say, grid systems that are running on these things, these are the kind of situations where the grid is printing money right now until it breaks out, and then you, you, you then you're gonna have to get, you're gonna be stuck in a drawdown. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the global indices quickly. So we've got this very interesting kind of the markets are very bullish and very reluctant to have that correction. They're sitting here. You can see us sitting at all time highs. I just want to move this uh, recorder here. So consolidation here. Now we could have a consolidation breakout. That is a possibility. We can see the bearish divergence here. Usually in situations like this, you get a break, you get a failed breakout. You get an attempt and a failed because that bearish divergence means the market is just losing that momentum. Is it due for a bit of a correction? I spoke about this last week. Um, it's very bullish, doesn't really want to do it. It is due for it. Yes, it can continue up before it does it. Uh, but yeah, I would love to see. It's so much better for the market to have just a just a solid correction. Obviously, during that period when it has that correction for one week, the media is all up in arms. Oh my word, the sky's falling. And then the next week they forget about it or they don't even forget about it. They move on about it. They just move on. So we still need that correction. Nothing has changed. Well, we need a correction. We need a weekly correction, which probably means one or two weeks of the market having a really nice steep correction. Whatever triggers that, whether it's a discussion of uh, rate cuts or rate hikes or keeping the rate stable or no change, anything like that that could possibly trigger that reaction, but it is very much overdue for that. Okay, we look at the S&P. S&P here had a minimum bit of a correction this week, bare minimum, and then pushed back up at this level. You can see here, 
a little bit of bearish divergence there. This level of resistance, I think, is worth marking. I think we need to take note of what this is. Uh, is that level going to hold? Are we going to see a bit of a deeper correction? But based off what I see over here, this is quite keen to keep going. So if we do break the high of this, we could see a continuation up. So when I look at the S&P, just to recap sort of where we are, it looks to me like it wants to keep going before it has that correction. This, to, to my mind, does not qualify as a decent uh, retracement on the weekly. This, to me, uh, sort of qualifies as more of a pause before it continues. So if I just enlarge this window quickly and go and have a look at it, this would be something, uh, oops, something like this, something we've seen in the past here. So you get a big move up, you have a red candle, you have a continuation, then a little bit of a wobble, then a continuation, and then you get your correction here. Similar type of behavior happens here, which means we can see a move up to 5,000 before we get a deeper correction, and then it's fine. Then we get that. Okay, so that's the kind of behavior that I'm expecting uh, at this time. Let's have a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's done the same thing. And actually, of the whole lot, the NASDAQ has done the, the best one, the healthiest correction in my mind. Why? Because it broke through resistance. It's come back and effectively tested it. This is, if you merge these two candles, if you combine them, they're basically a very bullish rejection candle and a potential continuation. There is some resistance here, but that looks to me as though its intention right now is to, uh, it wants to continue going to the upside. Mini Russell, okay, was a failed breakout at this time. So this is how we know if the markets are gonna maintain their bullishness, is if it doesn't even bother coming back down to the bottom of the range. Instead, what it does is takes another run at that level from where it is now. So this week, again, how we finish this week will give very strong clues to the following week. Do we just bullish? Do we just keep going? And again, if that happens, that's a hint of a, that's kind of, that leans towards that weaker US dollar. So, not every single move in the market is always about, well, just whatever the dollar does and doesn't do. But when the dollar has decided it's going to move, then everything else tends to move around it. So it's more, so what I'm looking at here is everything's kind of pausing. It appears as though all the markets are pausing, which means the dollar is a factor. If all of the asset classes are pausing, the only thing they all have in common is the US dollar. And therefore, we're waiting to see what happens there. Okay, that's why I mentioned the dollar this time. The FTSE as well, same thing again. If we, It is sitting at a level here within a range. And if it goes bullish from here, it takes another run at, at that. That's a good sign. Uh, the DAX. Same thing here is producing. This is producing. I don't really have a way to do this as a bit of a channel, but it is producing of a sorts. It is producing a bit of a, a, a bull flag. Okay, I'm just going to kind of draw it like that. Do another one like this. It is producing a little bit of that, and therefore I would look to see this at some point. I would look to see that break out. <clears throat> uh, ASX out of Australia also has started a very nice retracement here. It's coming back in. This is the bare minimum. We can see it just touching the highs of this uh, over here. It really should come back down towards that 7,350. It really should do that. The Nikkei, uh, beautiful. It's had, a con it's had a pullback on the monthly pullback. It's taken off and a bit of a consolidation and a breakout. Of all of them, the Nikkei is the most healthy in terms of its move to the upside right now. Does that mean this could turn out to be a failed breakout? It's possible, it's just the least likely option. I would say there's a two in 10 chance of this being the case. This has had a beautiful pullback, it's had a decent break, it had a massive consolidation, it's done a very healthy retracement. All of these things here are textbook examples of natural healthy behavior. And therefore I think that this one is probably the one that's gonna continue pushing to the upside. So it looks really nice and healthy. I think the odds are unlikely that this is gonna be a failed breakout. If this had to be a failed breakout and we saw all of the other markets have a correction, then something else is going on. Then our then we're going to go through a similar bear patch that we went through in September this uh, last year. It's it's not like it's very simple. The market is going to be either bullish or bearish or indecisive. One of those three indices tend to be bullish or bearish generally, uh, less so indecisive. Um, and 2023 showed them being bearish, and then obviously a patch being very bearish and then finishing really bullishly. So they've just really had, they've just come out of that bearish phase, September and October last year. They've just come out of it. Um, so that's why they should now maintain their bullishness, but they do need to have those healthy corrections. Apple, double topping here for sure. It's pulled back into these levels here. A bullish candle in this area would be really, really good. And they could take another, another run at those levels. For those of you who might not have heard, but Microsoft and Apple were head-to-head -head with regards to um, being the largest companies in the world. And because of this little bit of a correction in Apple and Microsoft taking a little bit of a lead, Microsoft is now kind of the largest company. Um, it's overtaken Apple. So interesting. Just a little bit of competition in the markets. Amazon looking nice and healthy. There's nothing wrong here. It's had a pullback. Very nice bullish continuation candle. Uh, a little bit of bearish divergence here on the daily, but that weekly looks great. 
looks good. So it should be able to continue up to that side. Let's see. AT&T battling actually at this area here, battling, but it is above the moving averages. And therefore there's less resistance to the upside. There's definite bearish divergence here. So possibly this is going to go a little bit sideways before continuing on, but overall it shouldn't be terrible. Arc just battling again to get out of this range. Um, but again, this is a good example where it has managed to get out. I don't see this really as a fail breakout. It doesn't, that kind of structure doesn't look that way. <clears throat> I'd look for a bullish candle this week. So this week, what would do well for the charts is to move a lot lower and finish a lot higher. That way they've had that retracement and they can continue. That's a possibility. Looks to me though, they might, the indices might just try and forge ahead anyway. We'll see. Um, also, all right, it's a very good thing when the indices are doing one thing and, and major stocks are doing different things. When you see diverse behavior, that's actually a sign of a very healthy economy in a way. When you see everything moving completely in unison, that's kind of a sign of a bubble. That's either fear-driven or greed-driven because there's just no differentiation between the value of the individual stocks. They're just all moving together. That's a bad sign. So when we see, maybe we see the S&P go up, but then we see Apple and Microsoft and Google, whatever, go down, that's not a bad thing. I mean, obviously their weightings in the index will impact that. They're bad examples of that. But my point is, is that when you see all your major stocks, <clears throat> let's say your top 100 US tech stocks, for example, or top 100 mixed stocks, S&P, all doing different things, that's actually a sign of diversity. That means each individual company is trading based on its own merits, combined with a little bit of the overall bullishness or bearishness. ASML. Nice little correction, also a bit of a double top. It's so very similar to Apple. It's in a really good place. Anyway, these can come back down to these levels before they continue to the upside. Glencore still stuck within range, hasn't really gone anywhere. Uh, Tesco, a little bit of a, uh, Tesco's trickling up. So you can see it's pullback, bullish candle here, could continue up over the coming week. Amex, uh, Amex starting that retracement. Amex really needs, the best thing for it, Amex is to come back down to 176, 175, and then continue from there. So again, would be great for it to do that. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway is absolutely fine. Absolutely beautiful. It's come back to the bottom of the recent level of resistance. It can still come back down to 353, but 360, but actually where it is now, 363, 363, not 353 is a great place for it to turn around. Coca-Cola is recovered. There was a patch where Coca-Cola was looking really struggling a bit. Looks really good, but I think we should frame this as a range. I think we should put that in like that. So let's do this as the range. I'm going to pick off the top of these candles here as the bottom of the range. Do it like that. And really only counts when we get outside of that. So right now it's looking really nice and bullish going up to the top of the range. Coca-Cola looks fine. A couple of these ones that are consolidating could ultimately down the road if we really are, as I believe we are at this time, in the next glorious bull run, the next glory bull market, uh, then these consolidations and ranges that we have should break out to the upside. If they don't, I'll adjust my view on that. But based on the evidence right now, I love it especially because so many people are pessimistic. And this is a great example of when, you know, do the opposite of crowds. Uh, contrarian. Um, historically, no one at the bottom of a market, no one has ever been optimistic. That's why people always go, well, why don't we ever spot the bottom of the market? Because they don't, because the collective mindset is incredibly bearish. It's only the few people who are sort of more experienced or maybe who've seen it before. I'm talking now about the Ray Dalios and the Michael Burries and the, you know, all those who've seen it before, they're like, no, we're fine. So far, there's not, you know, the data is not that bad. And the media has focused very much on being incredibly negative. Even when they get good news, they're just reluctant to spin it in any positive way. We've had, the US has had something stupid, like something ridiculous, like 25 or 30 months of straight job growth. Straight jobs just increases every month. Solid jobs haven't had a single down month. And that is historic. That's just, I don't think that's ever happened ever in the history of the US economy. And the, the mainstream media just can't like, can't accept it, cannot accept that the markets are not falling apart and the world isn't in dire straits. The world is in dire straits, but the economy is doing okay. All right. ExxonMobil. So this is the bottom of the range. Let's see if it could turn around um and see if it can work its way up this is very similar to what we saw with uh what was it, it was one of the uh was it um it was it was natural gas bit of that breakout and coming back into that a little bit of a you can see it's battling very much battling here with this resistance level 
Okay, very much battling with that. Might see a bit of a correction there before it continues on. JP Morgan showing signs of, of trying to create a bit of a correction there. Overall, I really like the look of this. It's nice and healthy. In fact, I still think January should finish higher. So possibly there might be a bit of a, a move down and then a move up. But overall, this looks to me looks relatively healthy. Adidas has pulled back. This should be it. It should now continue to the upside. So this week on Adidas, I'll be looking for a break above the weekly candle. Um, more so than a break below it. Meta continuing on, rock solid. Man, wow. Um, I can remember being quite, personally being quite um, biased against Meta because everyone had got sort of Facebook and it was just out of control. But you actually forget over the last 18 months, most people have kind of just left Facebook and they've stopped fiddling with things. So now Facebook is has pretty much settled into what it is now. They've stopped messing with a good thing. And so it is what it is. You use it or you don't use it, but it hasn't really, the difference is they took a really good thing and then just started to inject as much advertising and just messing with it so much that eventually people said it's just not usable from the way that it was originally intended. And so I was surprised and especially with the metaverse stuff, I just was like, it's not really going to recover. But that's a great example of me creating a bias in my mind. Um, but even as I've demonstrated to you, I'm willing to overcome that. I think in many ways, people have decided that it's not necessarily as bad as some other social media websites out there, and therefore they've sort of flocked back to it. But there are other services that are being offered. The marketplace, the Facebook marketplace is incredibly powerful. It's overtaken eBay in terms of a solution to sell stuff, to get rid of stuff locally as a marketplace, incredible. So there's a whole lot of other features and structures that are built into it that are being used where there's income to be generated and you can really target your, if you want to advertise on it, it's, there's nothing else that matches it. And then, so now they've got threads as well, which is a competitor to Twitter, which has seen some growth, you know, it isn't Twitter, but it has definitely has become, it has become an, alt, an alternative. It's weird to me that they, that they couldn't find an alternative, that it, it was that hard to find an alternative. But that is an ongoing story. We'll only know really a lot of that about that stuff when we get down the line and look back. Okay, Morgan Stanley. Range bound really when you see it here, heading up to the top of the range, you can see it's starting that retracement. So again, very similar to uh, some of the others we've just looked at. A bit of a move down and then a continuation to the upside. So some of these you can see they're showing that potential to do a bit of a correction, a little bit of a lower correction. This looking very nice and healthy. I'm going to remove the danger zone thing. All right, I think I could do that now. I, I'm ex I accept... I would have loved to have seen a deeper correction, but the reality is again, it's done a move up, it's done a pullback, and this retracement is the bare minimum retracement, but it is definitely one uh, that I think counts. It's pulled back on the monthly and it's taken off and it's looking relatively healthy and you can see those resistance levels. I'm going to count that as, for now, as healthy. Okay, I really was, again, this, <laughs> I'm not trying to, conf uh, just trying to outline all the bad decisions that I make, but I do to highlight where I revise my own analysis and I want to keep track of my headspace when I do stuff um, because that's part of the journey. All right. So again, looking good. It wants to break through this level of resistance. We'll see if you can do that. That's Netflix. Looks okay. Not super strong, but looking okay. PayPal trickling up. You can see it's really battling with that $62 level. We'll see if it can recover from that. And when you look at it from a monthly perspective, it's still stuck in that downtrend. So that really needs to change. It's, and I don't really know what the solution is. I, I'm not qualified in that area to say, well, you should change management or you should change this or that. I've always liked the product. I don't think the brand name has any negative associations, but they just, the share price is not attractive. Excuse me. And we've got these pullbacks. Oh, that's nice and healthy. Spotify looks really good. We've got Spider. Uh, batting with this level of resistance. Again, here, a small pullback and a continuation would make a lot of sense. We've got a double bottom here. So if I've read this correctly, historically, double bottoms will tend to break out. That's a, that is in itself a very bullish structure. It should break out to the upside. And when it does do that, it's got a solid move up to 141. So that'll be a one-to-one -one type of move, high probability. FedEx, very strong correction now. And now it's just kind of a uh, struggle here. Within the monthly, it's just battling in this. That's probably going to be a range for a while. <clears throat> excuse me, but so far it's looking okay. It looks like it will ultimately break out from that one. So that would be an example of one of those other companies that I think is got, can have a bit of a consolidation and then maybe break out later in the year. Um, you tend to have, generally, this is very much a loose generalization, real bull market from January through to April. Uh, and then it gets a bit funny sometimes. And then you have September's a terrible month and then you might have a bit of a Santa Claus rally. So it seems to me, uh, we're just gonna have to see what happens with this one. Tesla. Tesla didn't really have a good uh, a good week this week. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. Um, this downward sloping trend line is really just there to give me a line in the sand. Once we start to breach above that, then it starts to look more and more bullish. And the same for the upward sloping trend line. 
okay? In theory, until it really breaks below this low, I'm not gonna draw any bigger picture conclusions on, on, the, on the stock. That's it. We're only talking exclusively now about the stock price. I'm not going to draw anything. It's still got a level of support that it has to test you at 211 and 200 is a very big round number as is say 150 and 100 and so on and so forth. Um, but I would say this, we are currently in a weekly downtrend, lower highs, low lows. This is a channel. It's a, it's a, it's a channel in that sense. And so technically again, until we start to break below these lows and get below this, then if we had to start breaking below 180 and heading down, especially starting to break towards 150, then I would be like, Tesla's in trouble. Something is up, Tesla's in serious trouble. You can see it's, it's flirting with that bearish momentum. It's kind of hitting lower, but if it breaks below this, then it starts to become more bearish. Okay, so when it stays below that trend line, then the real sentiment has become really bearish. And it isn't there yet. So it just isn't there yet. So it's, I think it's one of these, uh, watch the space closely. Let's see what happens with it. <clears throat> These kind of levels, if we start to breach below those, then you will start to hear, you'll start to, for example, I can say for sure that if you start to break below these lows, then shareholders potentially or management or any board members will start to say, okay, we need to make changes. Like whatever those changes are, but we need to make changes, something is wrong. Especially, by the way, if other cars such as BYD, Build Your Dreams, which is now the number one EV manufacturer in the world, um, so Tesla has slipped to second place. I'm sorry, if anyone wasn't aware of that, Tesla has now slipped from the number one EV uh, manufacturer in the world to the number two. Um, they've got a massive number of delivery issues with the Cybertruck that's come out now with massive quality issues that have come out. Panels missing and stuff like that, which you can go and verify. Just Google it, you'll see stuff that, uh, that comes up. It could just be very pessimistic stuff and a whole lot of sentiment stuff, absolutely. Um, what I'm saying here is, is that if those things are real and are valid, it will eventually kind of snowball and the result will reflect itself in the share price and we'll see that happen. But it's too soon to really determine that. Um, but what I would say is that if the share price ends up going low, while other equivalent companies, Volkswagen, BMW, and different types of companies are, are rising, are going up, and the general market is bullish, but Tesla's going down, there's a problem. Like it's undeniable, there is a problem. If this is supposed to be a robust leading company and it's tanking while everybody else, the average companies are going up, there's a problem. Okay, so we'll just let the chart clue us in as to what's going on. <clears throat> Didn't have a good week, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm not going to extrapolate anything from one bad week until we start to break below certain levels. Okay. Uh, Vanguard. Okay. Vanguard's doing fine. It's just got to get past that, but it looks really healthy. It looks beautiful. It looks really, really nice. Uh, and then we've got Walt Disney. Walt Disney not really doing much. This is a level of support. I was looking to see what happened here. Didn't, it's really scraping by. So whatever the enthusiasm was here, it's kind of not here now. We need to see this pick up. So not much happening there. I can get rid of that because although it did take off, it really didn't complete that kind of whole move. <clears throat> Let's have a very quick look at bonds. So we're looking at the 10-year T-note. That looks really nice and bullish. Nice little pullback there. I do think these are going to turn around this year. I think we're going to see them turn around this year. So nice to see that. Europe especially is looking very much as though it wants to turn around. So this could be a potential move to the upside there. I'm just going to mark that. They're looking nice and bullish. And then we have a look at cryptos. So cryptos have uh, again had sort of, this is, a good example of failed breakouts, it's battling again. It's not unique. When we looked at all the other charts, all the other asset classes, they're battling a little bit. What was interesting about 2023 that I hadn't seen before was that cryptos did a bit of their own thing even while the rest of the market was sleepy. So that's a good sign. It means we could see similar types of things happening here. <clears throat> again, I'd love for that monthly to have a bit of a retracement before continuing on. And as this becomes more mainstream, as cryptos become more and more and more and more mainstream, we will see their behavior behave a little bit less bubble-like in terms of extreme moves. We will see that type of thing happening now. I still think it's a young industry. I think it's going to be young for the next 10 years. Um, and we'll see as it's adopted, you know, there's caution in certain areas. So we'll see how that goes. That's just my two cents. It's consolidating, battling to get through that resistance area. So this week, I want to see what happens with this. We need to get through. That's so far would qualify as a failed breakout. Um, Ethereum. Ethereum looks good, nice and healthy. That actually managed to break out so far, has managed to hold and stay above that. And it doesn't look that bad over there either. Look at that little break and a retest at a bullish candle off that level of support. Looks good. Solana, beautiful, coming back down. That's a bear, that's a bull flag. Lower highs, lower lows. So break above that would be a relatively clear signal that it is probably going to continue up. So I would do something like that and see if it breaks. Breaks that and breaks that, we're good. Uh, moves to the upside. Cardano. Same thing, you can just see that's really battle, pull back, nice bullish candle. We'll see if we could take a move to the upside. But all of them are really battling with that. There's just a point where there's just no buyers above a certain level. Okay, 
Um, and I'm going to leave you with that. What's happening with digital world? Nothing that's going nowhere. So yeah, so cryptos, you can see everything is very much under pressure. Everything is just waiting for something else to kind of kick off. And let's see what happens in the coming week. This is not a complete surprise. Really, we're now entering the, well, we're still in the second week of Jan. We'll go through on that one in the second week of that. But we really should. And then the third week, we need to start seeing some activity. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you had a good, I hope you have a good week. Fantastic. Uh, they, in general, the year is looking optimistic, although there's a lot of crazy stuff. There's just tens of elections, major elections happening worldwide. So be aware of that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in uh, next week's video. So thank you very much.